Ciao Juventino of the world, my name is Giuseppe, welcome back on the channel, as you see at my face I'm absolutely not happy because we have to speak about the physical conditions of Federico Chiesa, slightly injured and will probably not play against Macedonia tomorrow for the first game in the national team of Luciano Spalletti. Do I care about Spalletti? Absolutely not. Do I care that he's not playing tomorrow against Macedonia? Absolutely not. Do I care that our player is slightly injured? Absolutely yes, because on the world, on earth, there is not a lot of things that are annoying me more than international break first of all and I think that would be already uh, enough reason to annoy me the first letters of international break are inter eh, ragazzi that's already annoying but then if we are putting everything in context for these international breaks we stop in September we stop in October we stop in I don't know when we stop in March again but especially the one of September you are happy finally after six weeks of waits you see our Bianconeri again on the field and you are happy match day one match day two match day three and it's over they all go all around the world so it's quite difficult to monitor them to check them to see the progressions after three days you can already start having okay this is what we are doing well this is what we have to do better what are the areas to improve let's work on it and not because everyone is uh, going away don't re don't forget the first game that we will play at home after the international break will be the first big game on paper against Lazio and if you know that Danilo will go to Brazil. USA players, we have two. Wea, McKenny, and it's not a coincidence. The two players are playing on the right side of the field. They will arrive again in Italy with il fuso orario, with the time change, the zone, and so on and so on. One, maximum one and a half day before the kickoff against Lazio. Disaster. Disaster. Eh, if we want to see a Wea keeping with Juventus with the request of Max Allegri and so on and so on to understand better the game when he has to go up when he has to pay attention if we want to see that partnership with Gatti growing in training session well we can't because the international break but what is even more annoying is the fact that during international break during every single day when I know that they will train but also before the kickoff of every game that our Bianconeri are playing in I'm praying not that they score not that they do an assist, not that they perform well, not that their team win, I don't care. But I'm praying that our players, after 90 or 100 minutes, well, they come back as healthy as when we gave them to the national team. And this is not the case. I tell you about the physical condition of Federico Chiesa in a second. We will speak about Giroud that was injured yesterday. We'll speak about a few things in today's video, so remain with me. Chesney that is about to extend, and so on and so on. But the first thing I'm asking you, of course, if you're still there in the beginning of the video, if you're interested in the video put a maximum of like continue to subscribe to the channel because now we go to the physical condition of Federico Chiesa I want to reassure all of you that are watching because yes it is a muscular problem it's not a muscular injury could be a discomfort that could force listen to the words could force Chiesa to skip the game against Macedonia on Saturday when we hear could skip that means that it's not that serious it's not a, a serious injury it's not the nacl it's not whatever you want to the uv striker has an annoyance at the adductor and it could be forced to give forfeit to spalletti debuts okay we are reassured it's not something serious i wish that we take all the precautions juventus staff is already on the phone with italian national team to understand and to monitor the physical condition of the number seven of la vecchia signora well um hopefully they send him back to la continasa we put him in a frigo box basta you don't play you don't do anything and we open the frigo box just 30 minutes for the warm-up before the game against lazio in our home this is what i wish anyway we can be reassured it's not as serious as we were thinking with the first notifications but anyway it is annoying especially because today i started to work on the video in a totally different way speaking about federico chiesa and the differences in the three first games so now i will have to shorten it i can't go in detail too much but it is indeed a new federico chiesa in that 352 as a second striker some supporters starts to be convinced about that position himself starts to be convinced about that position max allegri is totally convinced since the beginning dreaming and thinking that chiesa could achieve between 14 and 16 goals in Serie A. He still has 35 games to score now at least 12 goals something that is possible 
And no, we will have to wait now. We'll have to wait instead of speaking of all these kind of details. The only thing that I can tell you, what I wanted to tell you, is after three games, we can see that Federico Chiesa, in terms of stats, is also the second most dangerous player of Serie A after match day three for contribution and production in offensive phases, but also a player that is the second most dangerous when he's taking a shot. So, attenzione, because we are speaking about beautiful result, and I tell you the truth, I think that there are a lot of big margins for Federico Chiesa to do even better. If we are speaking about national team and continue to speak about it, when I saw yesterday, because I watched the game, especially for Adrien Rabiot, France against Ireland, I have to say that when I saw uh, Olivier Giroud going out for injury, ankle injury, I was not celebrating. I never wish injuries to other players because that's something that I don't like, especially because I'm scared that when I'm wishing other players to be injured, the karma will knock at the door and will come to my team. I didn't wish it, but anyway, came as well. Luckily, not that serious for Chiesa, but it's annoying. It's annoying for a lot of players because you start one way of training with your club and then you have to adapt to another way of training with your national team. Traveling, the plane and so on and so on, annoying things. Anyway, yesterday was also the day of Dusan Vlaovic that lost uh, with Serbia against Hungaria. They lost 2-1 after the temporary advantage of uh, Serbia, he played 87 minutes, so in terms of physical condition, he is good. Kostic played only 46. I didn't watch the game. The only thing that I watched, and unfortunately I watched it, was that, I don't know if we can call it a goal of Vlaovic, an assist for the own goal of the Hungarian team. Can we call it a total miss? Well, watching it so many times, this is a total miss. This is something where Dusan Vlaovic can't miss. He needs to grow there in that position with an assist like that. He has to be lethal. He can't miss. So when we are speaking about Dusan Vlaovic, we hate him. We love him. I don't believe that there are a lot of time balance and I want to put things in balance. A player that I like, I wanted him to stay at Juve and I'm happy that he stayed. But a player that I think also deserves sometimes criticism. Also, sometimes we are exaggerating. But the thing of yesterday, the number nine that we spent 80 million for, I don't want him to miss because that's a really, really mistake according to me. Do you remember when I told you to pay attention to the last days of Mercato, especially to Dusan Vlaovic, when I told you mm, it's not because Chelsea, they definitely said no, Paris Saint-Germain and so on, because there is still a big player and we are speaking about the Real Madrid that is looking for a number nine. Well, Calcio Mercato, punto it, that I don't really trust being a fantastic, great, valid source. Well, they were reporting that they were contacts until the end of the Mercato for Dusan Vlaovic. 65 million euro was what Juventus was asking for the player. Cash without under players. Where Real Madrid even wanted to, but the doubts about his physical condition made everything stop. They are also reporting that Dusan Vlaovic was hoping until the end to go to Real Madrid. I don't know about that. I just know, as I told you on the channel, that pay attention because there is still a big player that we are not talking a lot about and it is Real Madrid on the player then if he wanted to go if he didn't want to go all the signs that Dusan was giving was that he wanted to stay at Juve and I'm happy that he stays but now on the field I don't want strange penalties like the one that he took against Empoli I want not what he did yesterday with Serbian national team. I want much better. I think that we deserve also much better. Of course, if the Pubalgia is leaving him alone. And the 87 minutes of yesterday are an evidence of it. Bremer and Co. Well, the good thing is that in Torino, in La Continasa, we have some players. Fagioli, Moiskin, Pogba, Gatti, that are all training really hard. Nicolo Sicaviglia and so on and so on to one day maybe being called up, but also especially to gain the form that probably they didn't have in the first games of Serie A. We are speaking especially about a Fagioli, for example, a Keen that missed that first game of the season and played a few minutes then against Empoli, where he already showed some talents. Yesterday in the live with Romeo Agresti, I don't know if you watched it or not, you can watch it in replay, clicking here, here, I don't know. Uh, you will see that uh, Moise Keen is the surprise player of Romeo Agresti. So let's see. Then we have to speak again about national team with Chesney that yesterday 
nobody was expecting him to play. Chesney played 90 minutes, a bit more than uh, than one half, I believe 55, 57 minutes for Milik. Milik didn't play that well. Poland didn't play that well. They won 2-0, but with a lot of difficulties. Chesney played 90 minutes. He played well, clean sheet. But the beautiful news, like Tuto Sport is reporting, is that Chesney is showing an act of love because he wants to continue with Juventus, even extending until 2026, from 7 million euro net going lower to 5 million euro net, which is a beautiful gesture for him because I'm sure that he can find other teams after his year of contract until 2025. Received a lot of proposal, especially from Saudi Arabia. We already translated the fact that he said no because he wants to give help, support to Juventus. He wants to stay there. So a real act of love for Szczesny, the goalkeeper of Poland. I'm happy, I told you. Eh? My big problem with Szczesny was only one, that he had a pre-COVID contract still that was quite high, especially in the standard of now of where Juventus is. If we can have a Chesney that is one of the best goalkeepers of the world at the moment, if we can have him on five, would that would make a lot of difference. So I would be really, really happy. I told you when I did a live with him, pre-life, he convinced me so much about leadership, about the importance of him being in the locker room. So absolutely, yes. Now we go towards another topic that... Uh, uh, who knows, one day I will really spend a total live on or maybe a total video on is the stadium, Lallian Stadium that in my heart is still Juventus Stadium that is today celebrating 12 years from that fantastic ceremony of opening where we played a friendly against Notts County uh, but what happened before that, that ceremony was just epic and fantastic with President Andrea Agnelli with a fantastic speech with Boni Perti that was still alive with us with Alessandro Del Piero in the stadium with so many important legends of Juventus the 50 legends the stars but us the supporters so today 12 years a lot of things changed in 12 years in the Allianz Stadium and one of them is the atmosphere that has been created or probably the atmosphere that went away. Well, I don't want to speak too much about it. I believe that the most beautiful gift that we can give for the 12th birthday of Juventus is one, is that we again go and admire the most beautiful stadium of Italy, that we admire the chance that we have to have such a beautiful stadium that deserve the sings, the song, the the applauses, the screams, and the support of the support of the Tifosi. This is what I would love more than anything. Then why and so on and so on. <sighs> Long discussion. Anyway, I will try to avoid negativity now to come back on it on a full video one day. Corriere dello Sport is speaking about national team with Nico d'Italia. We already spoke enough about national team, but I want to go towards the left side of that page. Processo alla Juve, trial to Juventus. Yes, but which one? Corriere dello Sport, better late than never. Because yesterday I told you there was absolutely nothing about that Prisma investigation that saw the Turin prosecutors being incompetent to judge Juventus, to investigate Juventus, they took it away to bring it to Roma. If you want to know more about it, go back to the video of yesterday where I took a lot of time to explain it. Uh, but today, better late than never, they spoke about it on the first page, Corriere dello Sport, where they also explain a bit that, well, we are going more and more towards a joke of a first trial that has been done and judged by sporting justice justice in Torino while they were absolutely not allowed to do it or at least the trial was done and then the sporting justice took their decision based on that trial while that initial trial should not have been take place in Torino anyway long discussion but I'm happy to see it on Corriere dello Sport while I still don't see it on the first page of Gazzetta dello Sport they are persisting in ignoring this fact they are speaking about Spalletti that is playing not today but tomorrow and then they are speaking about another Juve there is more game in the revolution of the new Allegri look when I told you in these three first games and I'm happy this time that I agree with Gazzetta or maybe that Gazzetta is agreeing with me 
I see differences in 22-23 Juventus. And I told you, even when we drew against Bologna, look, more ball possession. Last year, if we were at 49, we increased it to 53, which is not that much in terms of growth, but still, it's much better. It's four delta points. But you see from 27.42 minutes, we go towards more than 31 minutes ball possession during the game. What is really, really great is the field tilt. That means where the possession of Juventus has been hold. Super important because you can keep the ball possession with Chesney that is doing passes to Bremer all game long. No. Here, where is Juventus taking it? And you see that 46% of the time in 22-23, that ball possession was in the opposition half, while today it's 56. So 10 Delta points higher where we are holding the ball. So that means we are 10% more time spending with ball possession in opposition hall from the other one. So it's really fantastic. Also in terms of passes in the last third, so in the box of the opposition, we see that Juventus is first next to Inter with 38 passes in the opposition box. Atalanta third with 36 and fourth Napoli with 35. So I told you that Juventus slightly changed we are not there yet so calma tranquilli but we see already the progresses of what max is working on with the team and if we can have a locatelli that is increasing in form a rabio increasing in form i didn't even tell you but yesterday he played a fantastic game seriously a fantastic game i saw him doing things that i didn't even see him doing at juventus a locatelli a rabio a fagiola that is training hard probably a pogba on the bench against lazio Miretti, that will play with his national team of under 21. By the way, next week, beginning of the week, he's playing against uh, Kenan Yildiz because he's playing with Turkey. Well, if we have these players in the midfield that are starting to grow even more, I think that we can see a beautiful season. I don't know what the end result will be, but at least a beautiful season. Oh, I got see. Let's pray all together that our players are coming back healthy so that we can have the maximum of players available to play against Lazio because it's a must win game. Grazie for following, grazie for the like, grazie, forza, Juve.